Hi everyone. In this movie we are going to take a look at nested animation. We're going to see how we can take very simple animations and through structuring them in very clever ways we can make very complex animations out of them. So we're going to start off by going into Flash and I've prepared a movie already. It's actually just got one symbol in it. This is a um, circle fill underscore 50. Hey look at that I named it wrong. I should really call this underscore art because this is going to be one of those symbols that I'm not going to do anything to. Okay, so here we've got circle fill art and our idea first is that we're going to make a bouncing ball out of it. Now I want my bouncing ball to bounce from about halfway up in the stage down to the bottom and back up to halfway. It's not going to have any friction or decay on it, it's just going to keep bouncing indefinitely. So I could go about this two ways. If I did it insert new symbol, I would actually be in the symbol editor and I wouldn't be able to see the context. I wouldn't see where the top of the stage or the middle of the stage or the bottom of the stage was. So instead I'm going to take this other method and that is where we put an instance or some kind of artwork on stage and then we convert it to a symbol. Now this is a symbol. It's a symbol called circle fill underscore 50 underscore art. We're going to convert it or wrap it in another symbol container and then we can animate it there. Okay, just to keep everything nice and tidy, let's go ahead and put this at 0x and 200y. So that is all the way at the left hand side and it's halfway down. Okay, we will modify or we will use the right click menu and go ahead and convert to symbol. I'm going to call this circle fill bounce. Because I like to name my things combining what they contain, which is this circle fill symbol, and what it does. We'll click OK. And so now, instead of that instance of circle fill on our main stage, we have circle fill bounce because circle fill, that instance, is now inside of circle fill bounce. So let's double click to go in. Remember, the edit bar tells you where you are. So this is telling me that I am inside circle fill bounce, which means the timeline I'm looking at, this timeline right here, is the timeline of circle fill bounce. Now we want this to bounce, and I'm going to first off guess that I want maybe not quite a second, I'm going to say three quarters of a, of a second for it to fall and then rise up again. That's an easy number since we're 24 frames per second. That would mean that it would fall over 18 frames, 6, 12, 18. So let's go ahead and put a keyframe here. And since we're going to be going from top down to bottom in the middle of the keyframe back to the top, let's go ahead and put our keyframe at 36 as well so we don't have to reposition it. That way we have this ball at the exact same position on each of these keyframes we will come down to this middle one. So I'm going to hold my shift key down so that it stays constrained and just simply drag this down to the bottom. We can zoom in here just to make sure we've, whoops, went a little too far there. Uh, let's see, just to make sure that we've got it sitting right on the bottom. Looks good to me. Okay, so we'll zoom back out. Remember that's in our middle, middle keyframe, so now all I have to do is add my classic tweens there and there, and I have a bouncing ball animation. Now bouncing ball's kind of boring without gravity, so let's go ahead and just quickly add easing in here as we fall down, that makes it speed up, and easing out as we go back up. This should all be very familiar by now. I'm going to test my movie, and you'll see there is my bouncing ball. Now this is what I'm going to call a really simple animation. It's just this ball going up and down, up and down, up and down, forever. Now this is a straight motion. What would happen if I were to then tween this symbol, this sim symbol that contains the animation, what if I were to tween it to move across the stage? Well, let's see what happens. We can do this on the main timeline for now. We may not want to do that eventually, but for now, let's go ahead and do it right here. And let's tween it so that this movement takes place over how about three seconds. Let's go 24, 48, 72 frames. 
we will hit F6 here to add a new keyframe. And this one we can go ahead and use our align panel since we are on the main timeline and just align it to the right hand side of the stage and add our classic tween. Now watch what happens when we test the movie. Look at that motion. All of a sudden it's gone from being a straight up and down motion to an arcing motion. So it's kind of like a ball that's been thrown that's moving up and down and moving sideways. So that is actually the combination of two types of tween. One that goes up and down, one that goes left to right. We can see this a little better first if we add some extra frames here. So let's just go out to 120. I'm just going to hit F5 to add some static frames so that the symbol instance will just move across the stage. Now if I were to play this inside my editor here using the play uh, button right here, watch what this looks like. That's just the symbol instance moving across and staying still. This is one thing to be aware of is whenever you play things back in your Flash environment, it's not going to play the movie clip timelines. Graphic symbols, yes, you can see the graphic time symbol timelines play, but movie clips, since they're special, since they're not related or tied to this timeline, they are not going to display because Flash couldn't display them accurately. So really the only way to see a movie clip play is to come to Control, Test Movie, or Test, or better yet, memorize this command. Command Return on Mac, Control Enter on Windows. Let's go ahead and test it and see what we get. Okay, there it is bouncing across. Now this is where the symbol instance has stopped. We've just got those um, static frames where it bounces like so. Okay, one last thing that I'd like to do is we're going to add some artwork to this bouncing ball and we're going to use this artwork in order to give us an idea of what the actual symbol instance is doing. Okay. And I actually want to do this inside of Circle Fill Bounce, okay? Because what I want to do is add some artwork that's going to tell me, first of all, where the top of this thing is and where the bottom of the motion is, okay? So I can see, okay, my ball goes from y equals 0 to y equals 150. So let's go ahead and make ourselves another layer and we're just going to put a line on this layer and that line is going to go from the registration point down to 150. We're using pink because we're planning on getting rid of this line eventually. So I'm going to go over my line tool. That's N is your shortcut for that. And we'll go ahead and start this line right on the registration point I'm going to hold down shift again so I get it constrained. And you know, I can't really do this dragging very well, so I'm just going to make any old line and then come in here. Hey, look, I almost got it. 146. I actually want this to be 150. Okay, so now if I look and see what my line is showing me, it's showing me, okay, this is the side of the animation. The Ooh, I didn't do that right, did I? I 150 was actually down to the top of the ball. I forget to add the uh, height of the ball in there. Okay, look at that. Height of the ball is 200. Silly me. So let's add that, change this to 200. We're just adding 50 to that. Okay, now my line shows me the bottom of the motion and the top of the motion. So now if we come back to our main timeline, we can now see that pink line, which is actually going to help us to see what's going on. You can see, okay, um, let's go ahead and lock that so we don't see the bounding box. And so this is what happen is happening. Our symbol instance is just moving across the stage and staying still. Test our movie, and this helps us to see that really, yes, we're just looking at that bouncing ball going up and down and side to side, which gives us our curved motion. Now you can do some much more interesting things with this than bounce balls back and forth across the stage. So let's go ahead and delete this. Um, let's go back to our main timeline here. And we're just going to delete all of this from the main timeline. Okay, and I find the easiest way to delete something is add a new layer, take your current layer, remove it, 
And here, let's see, we're going to go ahead and remove all these frames from the timeline. I'm just going to select some of them and hit Shift F5, that removes frames, and just hit that a few times until it gets rid of them all. Okay, so there we have one empty keyframe. Let's take this circle fill bounce and put an instance on the stage. Now, let's use our align panel so that we can align it so that it is aligned to the um, center of the stage and then the bottom of the stage. We made our bounce halfway so we know that was about, uh, so it will come back to the center. I'm going to use my transform panel and rotate this thing by 30 degrees. Okay. Oops. Bad thinking. What did it rotate? It rotated around the center of the instance. That's not what I want. I really want it to rotate around the top, right at the top of the ball. So remember, I can get my free transform tool. That's Q is your shortcut for that, or just right over here. We're going to take that transformation point. And I do have snap to objects turned on, which is making that transformation point snap to my handle for the middle of this. Okay, now that I've got that set, let's get out of the free transform tool. Now we're going to hit rotate 30 degrees. Okay, so if I test my movie now, you can see we've got the ball bouncing at an angle. Not enough for me. Okay, remember your transform panel. It has this button down here, and this button duplicates the current selection and duplicates the transform. So if I hit this, it's going to make another instance of this symbol with the same transformation. So it's going to make another one that's 30 degrees rotated. Okay, let's make another one, another one, another one, another one. So you can see what I'm doing is quickly making a bunch of instances of this symbol those guidelines, the pink lines that I put on here temporarily, are showing me the path of the animation. So now, if I test my movie, look at that. Okay, so one simple animation, and we're getting much, much more complexity here. Let's go even further. What if we were to take all this content on the main timeline, all these instances, and wrap them in another symbol? We can do that. I'm going to hit select all, since that's the only thing I have here, and then convert to symbol. Now what we're going to call this is a circle fill bounce mini. Okay, this is just telling me that I've got many of these circle fills bouncing. Okay, we're not done yet. I want to put this inside of a symbol where I can rotate it. Because remember, if you're going to tween something, it needs to be a symbol instance. So let's convert this to a symbol again. I'm going to convert it to a symbol. And I should mention, we are going to use all movie clips in this next series of lectures. We've seen what graphic symbols can do, so you know that you can change the behavior of something to a graphic symbol if you need to control it on the timeline. But for now, for tonight, we're just going to deal with movie clips. Okay, circle fill, bounce, many, and this is going to rotate. Okay, so this is the time when it starts to be a good idea to keep an eye on your properties panel and your edit bar. Remember, your properties panel tells you what you have selected on stage, which is circle fill, bounce, many, and I can't quite see it all because my name's too long. This is telling me where I'm at. I'm actually going to double click to go inside this. And you can see, okay, we're inside the symbol, the rotate symbol. That's the timeline we're looking at, and we have an instance of circle fill bounce. As long as you click on your artwork, whatever you see here, and make sure that it's an instance of a symbol, then that means you can tween it on this timeline. If it's not a symbol, you need to check and make sure that you're where you think you are, like what timeline you think you are, and that... Um, you really have what selected you th that you expect to have selected because you know sometimes you can click down here in the timeline and have actually selected the frame even though it looks like I've got my symbol instance selected. Just for grins here, we're going to double click on this symbol instance and go one level deeper. You can see now we're looking at uh, the timeline of circle fill bounce many and that's where all my circle fill bounces are. We can double click again and we're even deeper. 
And this gets hard to see since we're on such a small screen, but your edit bar on a full screen is going to show you your hierarchy of your symbols. And here's we are in the uh, timeline of the animated symbol. If you want to get out of a symbol, just double click on empty area, or you can just come up here on your edit bar and click just like you would breadcrumbs on a website. Okay, so our goal here is to make this thing rotate because we're making complex actions out of simple things. I want my rotation to be kind of slow and lazy because otherwise I might, I might get uh, psychedelic or something on you. So we are going to pull this out, how about to 192 frames? That would be 8 seconds at 24 frames per second, if my math is right. Sometimes I'm never sure. Okay, so I will hit F6 to create a keyframe here. Go ahead and add our classic tween. We're going to set our rotation up here in the properties panel. Remember to see that rotation and the stuff for the tween. You actually have to click inside the tween and my properties panel is telling me what I've got. Uh, it's actually telling me the properties of the beginning frame here. So we're going to tell it to rotate clockwise and it's going to take on this default value of one time. So here inside of this symbol called circle fill bounce many rotate we have this thing rotating around. Going back to our main timeline you'll see that we still just have one frame on our main timeline and we have this rotate symbol here. So let's test our movie and see what we've got. Now you can see that not only are these circles rotating, but they're bouncing as well. Now so that we can see what this really looks like without those guidelines, let's go ahead and get rid of the guidelines. Now I like to keep the guides handy so I can turn them on and off so that's this pink layer here, or this layer uh, with the pink line. What I'm going to do is change this to a guide layer. What a guide layer does is it just makes this layer so that it will uh, does not publish with the rest of your file. So if I come back to scene one, you'll see, hey, those lines are gone. Now if I publish, you can see I've got uh, the beginnings maybe of a firework or something, or I don't know what else. The cool thing about doing things this way is now you can bring as many instances of this as you want. You can actually come in here and change the tint properties for an instance. So let's come into color effect and change the tint to, oh let's change that one to green. Let's change this one to, ah what looks good, blue? No. How about this gold color? Now my tint is just at 41%, so I'm getting these kind of muted colors. But watch what happens when we test now. Now we're getting uh, much more complexity. And remember that this is only two animations. It's only two tweens. One is the ball bouncing up and down, and the other one is the symbol that's made up of many of those balls bouncing up and down, rotating. Okay, so that's going to end our first look. In the next series of videos, we're going to look at a much, much more complex version, and we will start out by looking at the different states of it. So come on back.